I'm Brianna Rose, and I have the pleasure today of speaking with Lisa Dugan, the DNR Boat and Water Safety Outreach Coordinator. Thank you so much for being here today, Lisa. Hi, Brianna. Thank you. I'd like to start out with just talking a bit about how we can know when the ice is safe, because as Minnesotans, we have access to so many lakes and ponds. We're very lucky in that regard, and people like to ice skate, play pond hockey, go ice fishing. So how do we know when it's safe to go out there? Mm -hmm. Well, and that depends. There's a lot of factors that go into making sure the ice is safe before you head out. And in the early part of the season, especially, it's not just depending on the date on the calendar. Um, or if you went out this time last year, because there's so many variables that come into play um, in the early season when ice is starting to form, that it really depends, um, you know, where you are in the state, even from, you know, two similar bodies of water can be quite different as far as their ice thickness. So it's really important to wait until there's at least four inches of clear solid ice before stepping out on foot. Um, so not just looking at the calendar and assuming that because it's the middle of December that it's safe to go out onto the ice and always making sure that you're checking um, to ensure that you know whatever the activity is that you're doing that there's enough ice to support that activity. People also like to snowmobile across the ice. Are there any specific tips for snowmobilers? Yep. And you're absolutely right. Snowmobile and ATV has been a very popular way for ice anglers to get out, um, get out on their body water and get out to their best, to their favorite fishing spot. Um, there has been a troubling trend that we've noticed about the last five years that the number of fatalities that include either a snowmobile or ATV as it is at about 90%. So 90% of the fatalities that we see in Minnesota over the last five years have involved an ATV or snowmobile. And, you know, a few things to consider if you're taking those, you know, those machines out onto the ice is that there's enough ice to support you and the equipment that you have with you. Um, the side-by-side -side, um, four-wheelers are a lot heavier than maybe your typical class one ATV. So making sure that there's enough ice to support that. And then to not go out at night or if there's bad conditions, if it's foggy um, and visibility is really low, that comes into play a lot of times as well for people who are maybe on a body of water that they're unfamiliar with. Um, and if you're going too fast, you're overriding your headlights, you're not able to see if there's a hazard in front of you, if there's open water, if there's a crack in the ice. and if you don't have enough time to slow down, you can get into a really bad situation very quickly. So making sure that if you are out on the ice, give, your, give yourself enough time stopping in space. Um, so don't travel too fast where if you need to slow down that you have enough time to do it. In the horrible event that somebody does fall through the ice, what are some things that they can do to ensure that they survive? Mm -hmm. You're right. It's a scary situation. Um, that water is so cold. Um, your body does something that's called an automatic gasp reflex. So you fall into cold water or you fall through the ice and your body automatically inhales. And at that time, you know, the piece of equipment that's the most important is having on some buoyant gear so that when that happens that your head isn't below the water. Um, and giving yourself enough time to kind of work that shock of that cold water. Um, and if you do fall through, making sure that you give yourself time, give yourself a minute to calm down, um, try to regain your breath so that you can work through these next steps. If you have a whistle on you, if you have something you can call out for help to alert somebody else that you've fallen through the ice and then start working your way towards getting yourself out of the ice. So making sure that you're getting out in this direction you came from because that ice was strong enough to hold you at one point. Hopefully it'll be strong enough to get you out of the ice. So go back in the direction you came and then you wanna to try to spread your body weight out across the ice and then 
kick your feet as fast as you can to try to elevate your body and then pull yourself onto a solid piece of ice and then roll away from that hole that you fell into that spreads out your body weight. And then once you've gotten to an area of ice that's thick enough to support you, then you're able to stand up and get yourself home, get yourself into somewhere warm and safe. And, um, you know, the main goal is to make it home at the end of the day. Those are great tips. Um, should people have any tools with them then when they're out on the ice? Absolutely. There are, anytime you're out on the ice, um, plan ahead. Anytime, you know, you're fishing, you head out on your boat, you have your pieces of safety equipment that you bring with you. And you may, and it may not be your first instinct to grab a life jacket before you go out onto the ice, but there's options for float coats and buoyant snow pants. So if you're snowmobiling, um, if you have buoyant gear, wear that or look into purchasing it because, you know, should something happen that will save your life that can help get you out of the water. So planning ahead with bringing some sort of buoyant gear and then also bringing in ice picks. So ice picks, these are, you know, relatively inexpensive piece of equipment that you're able to bring with you. And then you can just, you know, you walk out, you put them around your neck and this will help you be able to pull yourself up out of the ice. Um, especially now where we don't have, you know, if there's a season where there's not a lot of snow, the ice is so extremely, extremely slippery. And to try to pull yourself out with wet gloves, wet clothes, you might not, you, I mean, you're gonna have a hard time finding traction. The ice picks give you that traction to pull yourself up out of the ice. Um, and then, you know, simple things like having a whistle. And then if you're going out, um, just, you know, have rope within your, in your gear that you're bringing out and then making sure that you're checking the ice before you go out and as you're walking out. So um, conditions can change really quickly in a small space and in a short amount of time as well. So make sure that you're checking the ice as you're going to make sure that you're still in an area where you have enough ice to support you. Lisa, thank you so much for sharing all these tips that can help keep us safe this winter season when we're out enjoying the ice. Thank you so much, Brianna. Thanks for getting out the safety message.